So I want to introduce our first keynote speaker for the 2016 Flash Memory Summit. Vijay Rao is uh, here from Facebook, where he's Director of Technology and Strategy. So his responsibilities include uh, defining and optimizing Facebook's infrastructure, and he works so closely with the software teams to designing high-performance systems in order to manage all of that uh, consumer and other content they deal with. He works closely with partners to define the future products and their roadmaps, and he's passionate about all things related to scale-out infrastructure. Now, before joining Facebook, he was a technologist in the office of the CTO at AMD. He's right here, by the way. Yeah, where he was primarily responsible for cloud-related products. So he told me to, uh, le to let you know that he will be sharing a number of changes at Facebook that they have been making in their infrastructure, and they've been very uh, real innovators in this whole area here with some of their initiatives. And he will also discuss how Facebook incorporates Flash and other non-volatile media. And finally wrap up with a number of industry asks that he'd like us to know about. So with that, I give you Vijay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction, Tom. Awesome energy in the room. Looks like a few more people coming in. Let's just get started. I'm excited to share a number of cool projects that we've really got going on at Facebook right now. They're really interesting from multiple viewpoints. So there's a lot to talk about. Let's settle in and enjoy the next half hour. Let's start with Facebook's mission. We aspire to build platforms that enable connectivity. By connections, we don't just mean passive ones, but connections that are rich in engagement. Speaking of engagement, here are some statistics. Here are some statistics related to engagement on our platform. This occurs on a regular basis, so it's not a one-off thing, but we've just picked things off from March 2016. This scale and variety of engagement puts a lot of stress on our infrastructure. But that's what makes designing it fun. These are some of the metrics that we track at Facebook to measure engagement. Engagement is key. I'd be saying that quite a few times during the presentation. Let's see a short video. The x-axis represents compute growth over time. The y-axis represents storage growth over the same period. And the area of the bubble represents the particular engagement metric. This is a lot of data that we sucked over many, many years. So as you can see, the bubbles grow, compute's growing. And you can see how the video is really picked up much later in the year, in 2014. This does not have live video in, so it's still the old videos, does not have Instagram. So a lot of growth on top of it. Photos actually, again, do not include Instagram, but they were a prime driver for engagement in the early parts. Messages, something very important to Facebook. And the reason you see the blinking is message, Messenger as a product was introduced only in Q3 2011, and so that's when the stat starts. But the number of messages have grown a lot, and we like that kind of engagement on our platform. Comments, that's another one that we actually hold close to us for engagement. Sorry if I look a little confused, these slides are not uh, moved by me, and so there's a little bit of lag here. Uh, comments are a very important part for us because that's how we track how many people are really engaging with each other. Oops. Okay. So likes, it looks really small, but really if you look at it, start focusing the time period after Q2 of 2013. That's when Facebook as a company put a lot of energy around mobile and our engagement increased significantly. We moved from the desktop platform over to mobile and that's where you see a lot of engagement. That's where you see the bubbles grow significantly after 2013. We anticipate spikes. We anticipate engagement spikes happening on days like Mother's Day and Valentine's Day. Those are well anticipated and we designed for those. But let's have some fun and look at some unanticipated spikes in engagement. Cricket is a very popular sport. 
For those who are familiar with the game, you know what this represents. But for those familiar with baseball, this is equivalent to the runner not reaching the plate and thus being declared out. And look at the direct correlation in time. More exciting the match, higher the engagement spike. These are the spikes that are really fun to design for. So here, let's have some fun with you. What do you think happened here? This is quite recent. To jog your memory a bit, not too long ago, no takers, people still settling in. That was the end of game seven, the NBA finals. Let's look at one more. What do you think happened here? Soccer fans, people from Europe, Yes, soccer is a very popular sport across the world. Popular events equal to engagement spikes. We like that. And these are the spikes that we saw in engagement just in Q4 2015. That's a lot. Let's take a look at how this impacts designing our infrastructure. That's a very large number. 14 zeros for those of you counting. 7.5 quadrillion. That's our current web server capacity in instructions per second. It's difficult to relate to such large numbers. So let's try this. If human beings could execute web server instructions, yep, if human beings could execute web server instructions, every human alive, including the baby born just now, would need to execute one million instructions every second. That's crazy. And that's how it feels. So at Facebook, engineers can have any server they want to design for all of these interesting problems, as long as it's one of these. Each is optimized for a specific bottleneck. Given our increasing capacity requirements, we specifically designed a web server that was tuned for this. We contributed to OCP. It's Yosemite for those of you who are familiar with it. It provides us 20% performance per watt improvement over the equivalent to socket server. So definitely a lot of benefits for us. And we're constantly looking for ways to improve our infrastructure, make it more efficient. And a few years ago, we disclosed that we were working on disaggregating resources. These were some of the challenges that we were up against when we decided to pursue resource disaggregation. Let's look at an example of how disaggregated compute and memory software works out for Facebook. Multi-feed, that's a service that has a leaf aggregator architecture. Basically, that means that there are two daemons running on the same server. The aggregator receives requests from the web server, and then it spawns off requests to all the leaves on the rack. It then aggregates the responses from all the leaves and sends the, sends the request back to the web server. Next slide, please. Aggregators are compute bound, while leaves are memory bound. We disaggregated these two daemons. We put them on separate racks, each tuned for a specific bottleneck. This improved efficiency by 40%, because we could allow each of the resources to scale independently, so we are no longer tied with a specific ratio of aggregator to leaves. You might have heard about this before, that's kind of why I'm skipping quickly, but this is a very important part for Facebook. It was a really good optimization. Let's turn our attention to storage now. This is the world's first hard drive. It was introduced in 1956. Lots of cool things have happened since then. Enough said. Storage is an interesting beast. We have a number of exabytes of data, but we've only got three types of media to store all of these on. These are some of the metrics that we consider as we traverse the storage hierarchy. This is a multi-dimensional problem. There isn't much to discuss about DRAM. Everyone's figured that one out. But there's some stuff to talk about NVM. Let's hold off on that for a bit. We've been using Flash for quite a while in our infrastructure. Not that long, Facebook isn't that old, but for quite a while. 
Sometimes it feels like we've packed a bunch of fast but expensive cars in our rack. These are some of the seeds, joking aside, these are some of the seeds that we're sowing for storage. We expect to reap the benefits in the next two to three years. So it's pretty near term. Let's look at lightning first. It's our JBOF, that stands for just a bunch of flash. We contributed this design to OCP. We are very excited to see a number of our partners contributing to this design and making enhancements. Please visit our partner booths today. There are a number of instances of this design and its variations out in the booths. Lightning finds its root in our JBOD. It has 30 slots for flash-based media. It's versatile and it accepts PCI-based flash in SSD and M.2 form factors. Disaggregating flash is a step towards our hierarchical storage. A number of our services, as you see here, have flash directly attached to our servers. This forces flash and compute to scale together. Makes it very hard for us to plan capacity. We design Lightning to share flash across multiple servers, allowing each resource to scale independently. That's the concept of Lightning. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Compute servers communicate to the top of the rack switch, and then the top of the rack switch connects to the head node. All of this is done over Ethernet. We don't typically have custom protocols, InfiniBand, it's all Ethernet. And these head nodes are directly attached to the flash sled. You could either use SATA or PCIe. This is a mock rack configuration for disaggregated flash. We put this, we put this together in Excel. It's kind of an interesting tool. It shows the compute nodes, it shows the head nodes and the flash sleds. But what's really interesting and satisfying is to see this design finally come alive. Here's a disaggregated rack actually serving production traffic. We currently use SATA instead of PCIe, but other than that, it's in production. Let's look at NVM. This refers to all the storage class memories, including P uh, PCM, Memristor, spin torque transistors, there are a bunch of the others. After many years, a really interesting class of storage is on the horizon. We are still in the early years of exploiting its applicability, but we are very excited about its potential. We've been looking at this for many years now, so we are really excited. 3D Crosspoint is significantly faster than NAND, but the impact to us is it requires us to make significant kernel modifications to take advantage of its speed. Our kernel team has been working hard on making these modifications. Think about polling, read-write queue separation, things of that variety. And we are upstreaming all of these enhancements. We have early access to development pro uh, prototypes from Intel, and we are excited to see this media also be available in the DIMM form factor in the future. On our side, we are working on re-architecting our storage hierarchy to take advantage of this new media. RocksDB, that's our persistent database store. It's a key value store optimized for storage media. It is used widely at Facebook, again open sourced. Read cache is a new piece of software that we've been writing for the past few years that enables steering. It uses NVM to provide low latency as well as persistence. That is also available on GitHub for users to try out. Intel has measured RocksDB performance on our benchmarks that have been open source. This is not in production traffic. They've done this both on 3D NAND as well as on 3D Crosspoint as well as their NAND flash. The performance improvements that we see on RocksDB, even though they're still on benchmarks, are pretty impressive. So definitely exciting. Now let's turn to topics to AVA. You might have heard about this in our previous OCP summit. We adopted PCI flashcards using Fusion I.O. quite a few years ago, but that's yesterday's news. Carrier cards and M.2 modules, these are the future. We call our carrier card AVA, and contribute to the spec to OCP. This design is simple and awesome, or should I just say simply awesome. We are strong proponents of the M.2 form factor. We have standardized our ask 
to 22 by 110 with a by 4 PCIe Gen 3 connectivity. We see a number of benefits with this form factor. It provides us the flexibility to determine the appropriate mix of capacity, performance, and media type. Now let's look at something that's interesting, that's a change, worm storage. Three years ago, at the Flash Memory Summit, Facebook, as well as a number of other companies, we asked, for, we asked the industry for worm storage. That's write once, read many. That's because a good portion of our data is immutable. Data is pretty hot initially, and then over time, its temperature reduces, and that's when it starts becoming immutable. And we've seen a significant increase in the amount of capacity we need from worm storage. The past three years, interestingly, on the industry side, saw a lot of innovations in technology process. Scaling planar NAND further became uneconomical because of the low number of electrons in the transistor. We get that. The industry fixed that using 3D NAND. Awesome. QLC NAND, which is the industry's response, stores four levels per cell, thus enabling high capacity in SSDs. So we are excited that many of our partners have figured out how to deliver high density, low endurance QLC flash. We are rooting for them to have it in production soon. We are modifying our infrastructure to take advantage of this advancement too. It's a give and take, the industry puts in some, we put in a bunch of work too. Now that this one's licked, Let's up our ask to five cells per cell. I think four is not enough. We should bump it up to five. The reason, we have a storage requirement of many, many exabytes. To put one exabyte in perspective, I recently visited Washington, D.C. I went to the Mint there. They print a lot of money daily. I learned a lot. It got me thinking. Imagine that they printed megabytes instead of dollars. It would still take them seven years to print one exabyte. Imagine, how, so an employee had a very interesting poster on the wall. It said, imagine how I feel. I printed my entire life savings in the last 20 minutes. Many years ago, the transition began from a pure hard drive storage infrastructure to one that efficiently used both hard drives and solid state memory. Now, we see another bi-directional pull. We see a pull towards higher performance, uh, non-volatile memory, and we also see a pull towards lower performance, higher density, worm, flash. And our hierarchical storage strategy that allows us to build a very flexible infrastructure, it embraces, it allows us to embrace all the upcoming innovations happening in the industry. We added Another type, I told you that we are only allowed to pick one of the types listed here. We added one more type to our fleet to enable disaggregated flash and hierarchical storage. Let's jump ahead and uh, look at some of the infrastructure metrics that we track at Facebook. We talked about uh, the engagement metrics earlier on. Now let's talk a little bit about the infrastructure metrics. This is how our infrastructure has now evolved over time. The x-axis, that represents percentage user growth. The y-axis is percentage employee growth. Not very interesting. But the area of the circle, the bubble, that represents the particular engagement metric that we care for. So compute growth, as you can see, really picked up again during 2013 when mobile became a very big part of our uh, company strategy. Yes, everything goes to the right and becomes big, as any chart. DRAM has grown considerably. We spend a lot of money on DRAM just as much uh, as on the other infrastructure parts. Keep track of the area of the circle. It starts really small for flash. That's just because to show you how much it has grown, how big the circle becomes at the end, the percentage was really small at the beginning. Grows significantly. Again, 2013 is when we started storing a lot more. We started seeing a lot more engagement with mobile. And that's 
hard drives, look at that. Hard drives, contrary to popular opinion, have not gone away. We use a lot of hard drives. Definitely still a big portion of our storage fleet. And this one's really interesting. Again, as 2013 rolls around, look at the amount of egress. Yep. Next slide, please. There are four asks we have of the industry. Standardize on the NVMe protocol, very important. We use NVMe as our default flash drive. Innovate on next generation NVM. We definitely like, to, like what we've seen, and we think there is a lot more potential for innovation there. Densify with QLC flash, absolutely a big area for us. We asked this three years ago, and we asked that again. And the last one, proliferate M.2. We are big fans of M.2. Here's a bird's eye view of some of the projects that we discussed today. We're working on many more. And finally, we take pride in working closely with all of our partners to develop innovative solutions, not just for Facebook, but for scale-out systems in general. Thank you for being our friends, and that's my presentation. Thank you. I think we have time for some questions if you want. Sure. Okay. So do we have any questions? If you have questions, uh, we've got microphones here, so you can come on up to microphone. Thank Go ahead. You, Tom. I'm K.R.S. Murthy. Hi. On slide number 51, you showed the dollar bill. Yep. You talked about megabytes and so on. Correct. And it's impending on us to get Bitcoin. A lot of things are happening if we are following up what Bitcoin is and so on. With Bitcoin, what you said is going to be disappearing in terms of uh, uh, how many gigabits you need or terabits you need and so on. Bitcoin is based on the numbers only, no paper, no image. Correct. Okay. So any comments on if Facebook is working on it, which is going to be very, very important in the whole currency industry, bank industry, credit industry, etc. Otherwise, we can talk offline. I'm an expert on Bitcoin as well. Sure. Thank you for the question. Yeah. That was not one that I expected to talk about today, but, and I am not the right person to talk it's about. Application in Facebook, yeah. Completely understand, that's not something I'm at the liberty to discuss about our future plans on uh, investments towards uh, currency and things of that sort. The goal for that picture was not so much to say it's paper money versus Bitcoin, just so that we're clear. And it had nothing to talk about how much money we spend. The only, as, only point I would like to say about uh, Bitcoin currency is yes, we look at it, and when the time is right, I'm sure the right folks at Facebook would make that decision. This is not the place for me to discuss that. Hi, yeah. uh, just a quick question. Uh, very fascinated, and I heard this once before about your both strategy on Flash and HDDs, and, and the, the dot got a lot bigger. Can you explain how that works, how you decide in each case of workload which will go which way? The HDDs, what's driving that? The SSDs, what's driving that? Oh, sure, that? sure. Yeah, I tended to take a uh, so I've given a bunch of presentations to a number of companies where I get into that detail. I thought that would be too much here. But it's really, if you remember that hierarchical storage slide where I talked about capacity, IOPS, endurance, that's what really drives what we want. Cost, I didn't call out there, but is an important factor, as you can imagine. So things like Hadoop, we use hard disk. Uh, things like our database, we use flash. So if we need IOPS, we go for flash. If you're looking for large capacity, lower IOPS, we tend to go towards hard drives. But with worm storage, things are a little bit fuzzy, and so there are certain parts where we would keep things on flash, there are certain parts that would move towards hard disk. It's a much longer explanation that I can give here, but high level, if you're looking for higher IOPS, lower latency, we go for flash. If you're looking for higher capacity, we go for hard drives. Thank you. We have one over here. The industry asks that you have based around flash. Yeah around NVMe and the, the Lightning chassis project. Uh -huh. 
how soon will you be engaging with the standards industry itself? We, we haven't seen you at any of those. Oh, we are as part of the NVMe standard, absolutely. We are part of the NVMe standard. We are, we've put in quite a bit of requests ourselves into that, uh, especially when you talk about uh, streams. We are pretty engaged there. But in general, we are very much engaged with the NVMe spec. We definitely make it very clear what are the things we would like to see in NVMe as a protocol. But all the other parts that I told you, NVM, M.2, QLC, there's no standards committee per se for that. Correct? Is that what you meant? Did I answer yes. your question right? It does, thank you. Awesome. And we are v there in other committees too, so definitely we are very engaged in committees. Vijay, since you're there, why don't you take the next one? Go for, for that it. side. Hi. I, thank you for the nice talk. Uh, oh, the sure, impression sure. I get was uh, sort of a, a, you know, diversification of memory application, things like that. But do you think that the trend will continue, or is there, do you see any uh, movement, forces, whatever, that may turn the, this trend into consolidation in the future? Sorry, I need a little more. Uh, when you say consolidation, what did you mean by? In, in memory, you know, application, you know, diversification sense. It seems like my impression was you're seeing like many different, uh, you know, radiant directions. Well, actually, it's interesting. It's not many different. Like I said, we just have three things to store, memory, flash, I mean, DRAM, flash, and hard disk. So those are the only three things that we play with. Now, we've created different pieces of infrastructure because uh, certain applications put certain pressure on certain types of media. For example, uh, with Lightning, we saw a lot of applications that needed access to a lot of data, but didn't really need it right away. For example, they could take a latency hit, but they wanted the capacity. That's why Lightning came about to be. But there are also applications that need a lot of performance. They need different kinds of media close to it, some NVM, some high endurance flash, and that's where AVA came about. So in AVA with M.2, we anticipate to put various types of memory so that we can mix and match the media type. So we don't see applications that would converge on just flash or just DRAM or just NVM. I think there'll be a mix, at least for the, or I should not say I, at Facebook, we definitely think there'll be a mix. Uh, we don't exactly know what the ratio of that mix is, but it's gonna be there. Thank you. Okay, we have one over here, go ahead. Vijay, thanks for the talk. Um, today, do you store all of the data that your users generate? And how do you see that changing over the next decade as more and more data is generated? How much do you intend to store? Uh, I'm thinking how do I answer that question? So we store the data that our users expect us to store. If a user deletes data, absolutely we delete the data. So let's make that very clear. We are very secure. We absolutely understand what we need to do from a user's perspective. Now, if your question was more about do we intend to delete that data on our own, no. We absolutely need to wait for the user to tell us this data can be deleted. Was that where you were going with your Will question? Will you be able to keep up with the rate of data generation then? I mean, you'll have to store it forever. That, that's a very valid question, which is kind of why we are pushing for larger capacity flash, larger capacity hard drives. Uh, at this point, the best answer I can give you is we do plan to store the data until the user deletes it. It's very possible things would change in the future. Uh, we are looking at other technologies for cold storage like Blu-ray, which allows us to store higher capacities than what you would imagine today with flash. Uh, with Hadoop, we do a lot of compression, so Definitely across the board, we use compression where we can. We, we try every trick that we know in the book. Uh, but until as a company we make a decision that we want to not store data, uh, we don't intend to change that. We're being judicious in the data that we generate. So what I haven't shown is there was another very interesting chart that or data that we collected at Facebook that is machine generated versus user generated. So the user sends in some data, but when we churn on that, we create a lot of data ourselves. So we are trying to be wiser on the machine-generated data rather than cut down on the user-generated data. Let's do one more here. Great talk. Uh, Jen Lee from Thank Huawei you. Technologies. A quick question. Um, so right now, like artificial intelligence, machine learning type of workloads pretty hard, uh, even for data temperature, right? So any comments or guidance on the uh, uh, system architecture or storage architecture for this type of workload? <laughs> Uh, AI is a very hot topic even at Facebook, as you, I'm sure you've seen uh, 
we've disclosed a lot of papers and a lot of interesting projects we're doing there. It's a little too much to discuss in a few minutes here, but what I'd like to say is absolutely today, things work on a, just like I said, leaf aggregated infrastructure, today things are on the training model and inference infrastructure. I believe, again, this is too early, I say I because I think at Facebook we are still figuring out what the right answer is. So I'm just taking a step ahead here and saying I believe that in the future there will be a lot of AI as part of our applications itself. And at that point, I think Facebook as a company will figure out how to change our infrastructure to put more either storage or change our algorithms to be able to be better distributed. Right now, we are too early to make that call. There's just too much happening. So today, we build infrastructure that's separate for training and separate for inference. But I, I hope, and I'm hopeful of how AI is going to evolve, that we'll have a much better infrastructure in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I think we can take maybe one more question. Oh, he, was, okay. he was before me. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Um, hi, I'm uh, Praveen from IBM's uh, Cloud Object Storage Group. Uh, I've been looking at TCOs for the last uh, little while, and based on your chart, Enterprise, if you look at industry standard trends, enterprise uh, flash is in the 50 to 60 cent per gigabyte, mm -hmm. trending down. Mm -hmm. uh, Client-based SSDs are, are, of course, much lower. And then you look at the trends on bulk capacity HDD, trending towards two cents a gigabyte. If you're putting your QLC below that as your egress path, along with your Blu-ray, are you, are you asking for under one cent per gigabyte flash for QLC? Because okay. otherwise you're, you're not going to be cheaper than bulk capacity HDD storage. Right. So we tend, I'm not at the liberty to talk about pricing here, but it's a good question that you bring that up. Our applications today that are on hard drives, there are some of our applications that are on pure flash. There are some of our applications that are on pure hard drive. But there are applications that are right in the middle. Hard drives are too low performant for that. Flash is too high performant for that. QLC falls right at the right place there. So it needs the capacity, but it can deal with the lower endurance. Now, what exactly that price needs to be is not something I can disclose here. Sure. You're welcome to come into Facebook and we can talk there. Yeah, no, I was talking industry trends on pricing. So it's just, I totally understand. understand that. So it's really your diagram is a little bit, there's really it's tapped off of your flash as opposed to underneath of HDD. Correct. From a, so from a cost standpoint. The reason we've put Worm and uh, HDD together is they are pretty close in terms of where we would want them to be. Now, does the price need to be exactly the same? Up, up for discussion. Capacities would be different. That's also up for discussion. So we always take TCO, never just dollar per gig. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Well, thank yeah. you very much. I think that's all thank we have time so for. Thank you, Vijay. Thanks.